Hi, hello everybody. Welcome to this channel and we are dealing with one question a day and the question that we are going to discuss is the histological and types of salivary gland classifications. Salivary glands should go like this. Salivary glands are brief introduction, exocrine glands, compound glands and composed of tubulo acinar glands, meaning has tubules and acinar. The acinar is the functional and secretory unit of salivary gland. Types of salivary glands, salivary glands are traditionally classified based on size or the volume of saliva they secrete as major salivary glands and minor salivary glands. Major salivary glands secrete the majority of the amount of saliva, parotid, submandibular, sublingual. Parotid 30% submandibular about uh, 60% about 8 to 9% this is 1 to 2% the minor salivary glands include those are the labial lingual palatine glossopalatines buccals even in your throat and the pharynx oropharynx based on the histological type or the acinus the secretory unit salivary glands are classified as if they have serous acinae they are called as serous glands if they have mucous glands mucous acinae they are called as mucous glands if they have both the entities, they are called as mixed or zero mucus glands with either serous predomination or mucus predomination. The major salivary glands going into the parotid acinus. Parotid gland is a pure serous acinus gland. In infants, they may have some mucus acinus too. All acinus cells are uniform and identical. The serous cells have dense granules in its apex called as cymogen granules here somewhere. Here it should be the zymogen granules, the acinus. Okay, they have intercalated ducts that profusely branch striated ducts that are pale and stained. They have a connective tissue capsule with flat globules, and the duct is this tension duct. Submandibular gland has serous cells, which is a mixed glands, has both serous mucus and but serous predominating than the mucus, hence it is zero mucus. They also have a structure called as demulins that we will deal now. They have basal and lateral serrations, projections, or what we call as microvilli. The serous granules have a dense core and matrix, sometimes crescent shaped. The duct of this gland is the water duct. Sublingual gland is a mixed gland with a mucus predomination. Since it is mucoserous in nature, has demulins. They have intercalated ducts and striated ducts, while striated ducts are poorly developed. The ducts are called as Bartholin's duct or duct of Rivinius, Rivinius, right? So that is the, uh, about the glands. Now going into the minor glands, labial glands, mixed salivary glands have demulions. Intracellular canalicula is present. Intercalated duct is of various length. Glassopalatines are the only pure mucus glands, only pure mucus minor with salivary glands present in the glassopalatine fossa. Palatine glands, mucus glands supplementing glossopalatine areas and found in the posterior part of the hard palate, soft palate and uvula. Lingual gland, the anterior lingual glands is called as the gland of blandin nun and purely mucus present on the ventral surface of tongue near lingual papilla. Posterior lingual gland can be either mucus posterior lateral to sulcus terminalis or serous one ebner glands and open into the circumvalent papilla. The serous salivary gland, the acinar structure. The serous acinar has eight to 10 pyramidal shaped cells with the central lumen that is star shaped, which extends into the cells to form an intracellular canaliculi. The serous acinar lie on a basement membrane surrounded by myoepithelial cells or basket cells that helps the saliva to be squeezed out. They have three types of junctions, zona occludens, zona adherens, macula adherens. Zona occludens is a tight junction, they are the adhering junctions. Okay, to go about the central, the nucleus is placed somewhere above the basement membrane and we have a lot of zymogen granules in the apex, a lot of zymogen granules in the apex which has a bluish hue. Whereas the mucus acinas have many columnar cells. It's not pyramidal cells, flattened columnar cells, central lumen, broad, big central lumen, and cell rest on a basement membrane surrounded by myoepithelial cells. And they have less intracellular or no intracellular. So you write the examples of the 
glance and go into the important structures in serum mucus glands called as the demi lunes of eosinophilia in serum mucus glands or mixed glands you will find both the entities serous and mellous mucus the demi lunes of eosinophilia are mucus acinae that are surrounded by a crescent shaped serous acinide in a c shaped arrangement overlapping the cells they are found in the submandibular and labial glands they are believed to be rich in lysozymes they are these uh, serous units c shaped serous units that overlie the mucus acinae are believed to be rich in lysozymes one people believe that researchers believe that now these are a processing artifact more than a distinct histological entity but there is no unanimous verdict on this saliva composition 99% of water 1% inorganic organic enzymes immunoglobulins and factors affecting the nature of saliva secretion serous glands secrete watery saliva mucus gland secretes mucinous or thick saliva the nature of stimuli if it is strong taste oriented they produce a copious amount of serous glands if it is time is there they secrete more of mucus intensity rate of flow at stimuli is more than at rest time of day increase salivation day at day and less during night clinical consideration inflammation of glands is mumps you have infection you have salivary less secretion of saliva serostomia you have dry mouth you have damage to the salivary acinar duct you have damage to the acinus so all these are the clinical significance you need to talk about so that's we come to the end of the discussion on uh the uh, histological types of salivary gland and acinus thank you stay connected with this channel for learning more learn at least one question a day learn incrementally happy learning till we meet again